And welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo. Miss Joan Marie Moose will be back with us next week. And my guest tonight is returning Paul Garin, who is the Internet entrepreneur from the East Village, Lower East Side, who knows so much about the Internet. And I love to have him on because you're here to really discuss the inner workings of the net, how it works. And behind us, we have an interesting thing, .nyc. I mean, we're all... Uh, familiar with .com, .net, .org, .edu if you work in a school, uh, .gov if you work for the government, .mil if you work for the military. But did you know that there's all these other dots? Well, a few more coming up. .info you see sometimes, .biz, B-I-Z. It's your name plus dot and a little three-letter word that uh, sort of gives you a categorization of your website and your web page. Well, you know, that little dot and three-letter uh, suffix there is uh, more important, you might realize, for resolving your place on the Internet and for folks having that access to the Internet that we're always talking about here at MNN and we're talking here about on uh, Let Them Talk, uh, you know, the fact that, uh, that, you know, are certain communities being locked out of the Internet? and the importance of the Internet is in our modern economy and our modern society. Well, Paul, I'm going to direct those questions to you. Why are those three little letters, .com, .biz, .org, .net, .info, uh, all the ones we went through, .mil, you know, everything, why, and now .nyc, why is that so important, those three letter, and do they have to be three letters? What are they called, top-level domains? Top-level domains. Um, first of all, uh, thanks again for having me on this show. It's always a pleasure to be yes, back here at Manhattan thank you Neighborhood for Network. Us, yes. And I'm always uh, grateful of this uh, community access television and my ability to come on and share what I know and what I've experienced with viewers. Mm -hmm. The domain system on the Internet is something that goes back to the early days as the network began to scale. Uh, how to delegate administration of networks to local administrators. Mm -hmm. And a uh, computer scientist named Paul Makapetris came up with the concept of the domain name system, mm -hmm. which is essentially composed, as, as we generally see it, of a top-level domain and a second-level domain, for example, mnn.org. Right. Now, the way the domains are organized, and, and first let me step back, the importance of the domains is in helping com computers find each other on the Internet. It's, it's a way to look up what's where and also how to delegate the administration and organization of that to the local network and not have it as a centralized function. This, right. this makes, that's as the, the network... That's interesting because that's the key thing of the Internet. A lot of folks don't understand is that the Internet was designed to be survivable in case of nuclear war back in the bad old days of the Cold War. So therefore, if some hard enemy were to launch a nuclear missile strike and take out huge chunks of America, the chunks that remained would still be connected. Therefore, the country could reorganize and survive possibly such a hard, hopefully never And, and the beauty of that is, is these types of protocols that enable and allow the Internet to scale. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're dealing with now specifically with the top-level domains... Scale from small... Scale to small to large and, and to be manageable. So it could start like the initial Internet started as a couple of small uh, university locations that were doing research and development. Right. The list of computers that needed to find each other was very finite. And now how many are on the Well, I, I don't know the exact it's number. Nobody knows. But, but millions. As, it, as it grows, in yeah. fact, uh, I'll, I'll point to an example in, in a little bit later right. in the show, uh, how the Internet address space also needs to grow in order to accommodate like phone numbers? the larger, uh, beyond that, but... Uh, but uh, in order for there to accommodate a larger number of devices on the network. Now, uh, the domain system is basically how to organize what's where. Everybody is familiar with a URL, right? So URL for a web address stands for Uniform or Universal Resource Locator. What that tells us is what is where. And generally, web address is preceded by the domain and then the other path on the local server, where does that information reside? Um, so you ask the question, does it have to be three letters at the end? The answer to that is no. And the, the, the answer to that is that it can be any number of characters within reason uh, at the top level domain. And generally has been kind of limited only due to aesthetics not due to any real technical reason. And, and let me bring that point up because uh, since 1996, I started a project called Name.Space. Mm -hmm. And Name.Space was a way where small media mm -hmm. could
could connect with big media yeah. to create domain names, top level domains, mm -hmm. relatively with ease because it's a relatively simple process, which I'll demonstrate in, in, a, in the next uh, section. Good. Um, uh, to bring on very simply new domains like .art, .music, .sucks, .nyc, etc. And that would enable a way to create a funding source for alternate media. Now, the, the trouble is uh, this root of the internet, which defines all the top level domains, is controlled by a small group of major corporate interests that want to prevent mm -hmm. small media, local media, from benefiting. How does it do that? That's, I, I know that it's sort of know the answer, but tell us. Tell us. Uh, the, can we the viewers, go to the next uh, yes. to the next screen? Sure, uh, we can. You can assist I'll do that. that. We're going I'll, to look at. I'll do that and give Paul here a chance to. Uh, what uh, defines the internet's root? We're going to have to pull the chair out of the way. Paul, can you just uh, scroll down or up? What's that? That's oh, back that of your chair. Oh, yeah. okay. Push your chair there. Yeah, you got just it. Get, get out of the way there. here. All right. Uh, okay. This is uh, live cable access TV, so <laughs> we've got to go on the fly. Okay. So here we go. If you look here, well, like I feel like the weatherman. Uh, <laughs> the um, at, weatherman. at this part, can we see the left of that a little bit more? Uh, like We're this? not seeing the full screen. Yeah, that's better. Okay. All right. There we if go. you look here, there, right you? there, you yeah. see that? That's the dot. Dot okay. is the root, this and right this, here. as you scroll down to the other side of that, it names the domain of the computers that serve the root database. This is essentially a replica of the file that runs, that every ISP uses in order to identify the location of the domain names. Now, I, I want to help people out there, ISP. Internet what? Service Provider. Those are the companies that you use to get on the to internet. To connect to the internet. Yeah. Okay. So now what we see here is the dot is really the central database of all the top level domains. And as we move across the line here, we see the domain name of the machines that answer to all domain queries. Then as we scroll down, we see these names repeated again. And then it's followed by an address. This is the IP address of those machines. And if we can see the IP, what's the IP? Internet protocol address. Every computer is hardwired, hard coded with a domain and an IP address. The IP address is, is the hard coded address of the machine. When that you buy a machine, to, it's got a number. No, it, whenever you connect to your service provider, you get assigned an IP address. Okay. But servers like Google or Yahoo or anything else, they have their IP addresses generally fixed and they are mapped to the domain name. So how this database works is basically the dot is the, is the central domain database. These domain names are the addresses of the name servers. And then this part here, where it restates the domain of the server and points to the IP address, establishes the relationship between the domain and the IP address of these machines. This is what's called glue. This means that nobody else can say that this a.root-servers.net is anything but this IP address. This is the authority. Uh, and if we look here, four A's is an IP version six address. This is the new address space that's going to come out as part of Internet 2. As you can see, it's much more complex than this IP version four address that most people are familiar with. This actually, because it's, be it's becoming more complex, makes the domain even much more important because it becomes very difficult to remember what an IP version 6 address looks like. Now, if you can continue to scroll down, uh, Paul, what we'll see now on this side is all the top-level domains. Yeah, you can go faster. 